saturday to everybody once again thank you so much for being here it's aviola by grace here again remember my name is aviola adefe you can call me aviola by grace abby or abiola please let your friends know we are now live okay it's another saturday happy saturday happy saturday i'm glad to have everybody join us here let me know if you can hear me thank you so much for being here please share on your stories share with your friends let them know we are live now it's another saturday and um today i'm sure many people already saw the post uh, um the e-flyer so we are discussing friendship in marriage last week we discussed navigating the complexity of kingdom friendships today we are discussing friendship in marriage and for many people i know you understand many people should understand why we have to discuss this just because of the narrative out there with marriage and um we have a guest here i mean she's been married for so many years and this is actually our field as well so she's coming to do justice to this particular theme of today and um it's interesting because the bible even says this that let the older women teach the younger women and there's a reason why and older year isn't even just by age honestly because older hair is not by age it's also by experience you know in this context and that's in titus chapter 2 if you want to study the scripture and um aside that you know it's it's interesting that in our generation many people think marriage is all about you know the title just being titled mr and mrs or it's just about the sex or it's just about hi Anthea, so good to have you here <laughs> welcome on board so um so as i was saying yeah friendship in marriage it's necessary just because of the narrative out there yes there's so much out there so so much to learn from and all but then there are still some missing pieces and that's why we have this kingdom culture conversations to help us shape our ideologies to align well with how the kingdom wants with how it is it should be in this kingdom of light that we are in yes how is my baby <laughs> um yeah um so I'm so glad to have her. Hi, Auntie. Auntie Doing is here as well. Pastor Doing is here. Thank you so much for joining. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. I had, the fa I had the girls and my uncle as well. Thank you so much for being here. So um, as I was saying about friendship in marriage, I think this is, this is a necessary conversation to have. Like I was saying about kingdom culture conversations. Why do we come here to have these conversations? If we say in Colossians 1.13 that the Lord has called us out of the kingdom of darkness and out of the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of light, then there's a way we operate in light, right? There's a way we understand. There's a way we receive knowledge and practicalize the things we are taught in light. And uh, for many people, people think marriage is all about, okay, you know, sex, it's all about having children, it's all about, okay, the love of my life and I, we're just doing life together. Yes, it is part of it, but there's still so much in marriage that we don't know. There's still so much in marriage that uh, we need to learn. And sometimes, like I say here, you may not need to be learning something new, maybe about you learning, on learning some things we've been exposed to, some things we've seen in the movies, some things we've been taught. You know, it's also that part of us on learning. And that's what the Kingdom Culture Conversation seeks to achieve. You know, the mindset shift that we need in our homes, in our generation. And so uh, Pastor Tinoke will be joining us soon. And she's going to be treating this particular title and helping us to see what the home entails beyond the parenting years. Yes, for many people as well, they think, oh, I'm just in this marriage for the children. Mm. So when the children leave, which, which happens to many grandparents, okay, when the children leave, so what then happens to the marriage? There's, so there's so much more than sex, than raising children, because ch the children will leave right now, you know, and then this, this particular thing just came to mind recently, you know, I was just thinking about how busy our lives are with our kids being little, and then I'm like, okay, when we grow beyond this phase, what then happens, really? You know, there's, many people don't prepare ahead of then, and that's why we have these conversations. That's why we have these conversations. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please don't forget to share with your friends and leave questions as Pastor Tinoke joins us. Leave questions. Let us know. Let us know the areas that you have questions in. And uh, yeah, so marriage again is beyond 
um, sex is beyond uh, raising children, it's beyond just being married, right? There is so much more. And that's why we have the older women teaching the younger women. If we will listen, I pray for great, for hearing years and seeing eyes for us as well, you know, to understand and to listen to this. Thing. Is he already? Um, I think Pastor Doni was sending me a request. I will. Hi, Mama. Hi. How are you? You're looking How so beautiful are you? as always. We're fine. Oh, yeah. You are looking so beautiful too. So it's cold, so yeah. So I wanted to show you my pretty top, <laughs> but I may show you briefly oh. and wrap up again. <laughs> so I don't worry, you're getting used to it. You're doing uh -huh. well. <laughs> You are doing so mm. well. Thank so you. Glad to have you I'm here. Happy Ma. I was just, to be here. Everybody, welcome, Pastor Tinoke here. I'm so glad to be doing this with her. Thank You're such a passionate you. woman. You're such an impactful woman. You've got more uh -huh. operational impact. You know, uh -huh. You're impacting our age group. You're impacting your age group. You're impacting the ones above you. Uh -huh. and, whatever, and whatever we learn from you as well, we get to impact to the younger awesome. ones. I have got yes. young daughters, two daughters, and so I know mm -hmm. they will learn some things even from what we are gleaning on from what we are soaking in so thank yes. you so much for being a blessing we don't take it, for granted. I take it for granted you're welcome yeah you're so welcome. Um, i was just discussing with the people who joined us earlier on on why it is necessary for us to have this conversation friendship and marriage mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. beyond parenting years mm -hmm. and so this this particular thing dawned on me a couple of months ago when you know i myself and my husband which we had our grandparents um my mother-in-law and my father-in-law visiting mm. and so they were here and it was just so beautiful to see them mm. with the kids and all and then so i'm like okay for us life beyond this active parenting years where we seem busy mm -hmm. where it seems that like, oh, we're busy and we have power schedules are packed so mm. when kids leave the house what then happens to the marriage you know, because it won't always be about sex. Sometimes you may want to have sex with me and I may not be in the mood. Sometimes I may want to have sex with you. You may not be in the mood. So it's beyond that. It's beyond being titled Mr. and Mrs. It's beyond being, oh, I'm 24, I'm 25. Okay, go and marry. There's so much more to it. And that's why we have you here because, I mean, you've portrayed it. We see it's not just in pictures, mm -hmm. but we see it even in the way you talk about your husband when you meet this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. thank you so much. And that's what we're here for. Thank you. But is. It's not my show, so it's your show. I'm ah, ha, ha, ha. It's both our shows. We are doing this together. <laughs> but, but to you, though, what do you feel about the steam? What do you think? What comes to mind? Mm. Yeah. Number one, Abiola, I really want to celebrate you. I want to thank you for thoughtfulness. I want to thank you for being deep in your thoughts. You know, one thing that worries me about the generation that we are raising you know, of the generation after is a lot of shallowness you know there isn't depth people are not committed to deep thinking futuristic thinking it's just about the now about the see me about the designer days about the we are the ones happening and honestly we really think sorry oh. that's it yeah. that's okay it's so good to have uh, pastor tino here um I, like i said earlier on about the titus chapter 2 scripture how the bible says let the older women teach the younger women um you know how to love their husbands and even not and i'm sure it's not just in terms of even how to love their husbands the point is let the older women teach the younger women and older here is not even just by age it's also experience thank you ma go ahead okay yeah i was still saying that um building a solid community of deep conversations will help us when the Bible in that Titus 2 that you were talking about said, let the older women teach the younger women. If we don't find a common zoom, if we don't find um, a place to rob minds and interact and deal with one another from an open place, from that place of receiving, I won't be able to be that blessing to you 
So it's I love the deliberateness. I love the fact that you see a need and you're walking the path. Now, before we even go further, honestly, I'm just going to beg everyone here so far, tag a friend. You may really think your friend doesn't need this. We do need it. Nobody is going to tap on your shoulder and say, ah, these are my challenges. But this community of women, womanhood, this community of love, this community of friendship is going to help you bless somebody without even knowing that you are doing that. So please just tag a friend, pin a friend. Call somebody that God is just going to bless you right now. And I'm just asking you to just join in. It's important. He said, let the older women teach the younger women. And what I take out of this place is mentoring. Mm. Mentoring. Mentoring. Who are you touring as in to be a tour, tour guide? Like I am about to be a tour guide. Do you understand? That's mentoring. Who is, who, who is taking you on a tour? of life who has gone ahead of you who has seen it mm. who are you holding in your own hands to say tour, show me the tour, tour, take a tour of life for me hold my hand why should i learn in 10 years what do you learn in 10 years what's the benefit of your experience what's the benefit of my experience if what i learned in 10 years you want to learn in 10 years as well you are supposed to learn it in 10 days Come on. So that by the time our own children are coming up, they have an antibiola to run to so I can learn it in eight hours. You see how God created the solitary for family and we are the ones missing it by being competitive, by being petty and jealous, by not wanting to be corrected. The only thing that brought isolation into our world is this not wanting somebody to confront me and say, no, 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 Biola, I love you, but mm -mm, in that area, you didn't try. Uh -uh, how can you do that? And that's the only way we are going to grow. Somebody loving me enough to look at me and say, sweetheart, you know I love you. That's not in doubt. But yeah. in this one, eh, you didn't try. You can do better. Yeah. It's called blind spot, and we all have it. I am 52, but I still have my aunties in the faith. I have my mothers in the faith. I have people I still defer to. I have people I learn from. Yeah. It's yeah. so important it's a community of women that must grow together be humble enough to learn knowing that i'm going on a tour with you i can't be more catholic than the pope the person who has <laughs> gone ahead of me knows the way let me just surrender is that not the secret is that not the secret of ruth yes. see how god said to ruth Yes. See how God settled Ruth, a Moabites, someone who was not even connected to the commonwealth of Israel. Yet a book was written after her because she connected to a grace. A wow. woman that was already broken, she connected to her and allowed her to teach her. So please, I just want us to know that this is a platform that the Lord has set up for our own good. Let's be open-minded and learn. So today, it's all about friendship in marriage. Yes. Friendship in marriage for me is beyond love in marriage. Friendship in marriage is not love in yes. marriage. Yes, yes ma'am. In fact, we cannot boast of friendship in a marriage until I have learned you and you have learned me until we have fought all the fights that we need to fight we have understood our boundaries and everybody knows this one with this my wife it won't fly this one with this my husband it will not be okay so friendship does not happen early in marriage see all that dating then dating phase we are all pretending everybody all of us have been married me i've been married for 25 years and now I know that dating face we all pretending to ourselves. You did not know the real me. You don't know the snoring me. I love you don't know the shattering tables. <laughs> you didn't know the snoring me. <laughs> You know, you don't know the me that eats a lot. When I come around you and we go on a date, I'll just pick one slice of bread and go home and fix my swallow. So you really didn't know me. I was not showing you the part that will convince you beyond any reasonable doubt that I'm the one for you. But you see, in marriage, 
no more pretenses. Oh, no. I'm not going to pretend about the <laughs> um, size of meal I want to eat because you are around. Abuse me all you can. That is me. That's what makes me, that's what satisfies me. <laughs> so, friendship in marriage is a higher calling mm. and it takes a more matured me. Mm. <laughs> it takes wow. a more matured me it takes the me that has lent your strength and your weakness and i'm ready to celebrate your strength and cope cope is my word because many of us enter marriage thinking we can change another human being please never forget 10 girlfriends had come before you they were unable to change him and her do you understand all of us when people that came into our lives before you could not change us why do we think somebody i mean me now in your life i'm able to change it's amazing how we accept the good in people and we are not able to accept the bad in them we are all a combination of our strengths and our weaknesses and friendship in a marriage is accepting the strength my husband calls it a um seven over ten principle you understand everybody we all have our line up of strength what we are very good at it may not be the most financially strong person in fact you lady may be financially better stronger than him and you will be making a mistake in that relationship if your eyes are only on the area of his weakness that guy that does not have money like you prays for you all the time does it count for anything that guy that does not have money like you it helps you in the kitchen yes wow. that guy that does not have all the money like you to take you to the bahamas or to take you to honolulu he is able to clean up after you you know that you're a dirty wife but this guy will not let it show because he cleans up literally out of you why are you only talking about the fact that he does not have the money like you want it and you know what's amazing god has blessed that family by giving you the wife the money that that family needs but just due to you Human nature we would rather look away from that divine supply and the other generosity and the benevolence of god and fixate on what is not good to the detriment of that marriage selfish selfish do you understand that so it is number one you mastering the strength and the weakness of your spouse i always put it this way that a wife who continuously prays for her husband will stand in faith for that man until the change comes according to job 14 14. Yes. and as long as you are standing in faith for your spouse you will not be the one crumbling his destiny by the words that you speak yes. by the negative words yes. you do this you that we have borrowed a lot of wrong cultures from the world that many wives need to repent from colossians yes. 1 13 it says we are being delivered yes from darkness we have been delivered from the government of satan why are we still borrowing scripts why are we still borrowing conduct and life from satanic world and government you have no business borrowing scripts it's time to go back to the women in the bible let us see how these women prevailed there, there is nothing the world system had to offer you and I. Let's go back and let me tell you, until people around you begin to look at you like you're a very stupid girl for even thinking this, you have not become Christ-like. Look at Christ, our perfect example. Christ knew, Kayada, Christ knew that Judas was his betrayer, yet he washed his feet. Then he says, this, I'm setting an example for you on how I want you to love. Hmm. The world cannot comprehend this. That's why we love by revelation. We love by knowing. We love by knowing. Close work with the Holy Spirit. That is how we love. We love by deep intimacy and deep intercourse with the Holy Ghost. And it's when we intercourse with the Holy Ghost and He begins to pour His seed into us, we begin to conceive the, the seed of love, the seed of joy, the seed of patience and long suffering and self control and temperance and meekness. Yes, it's by intimacy with the Holy Spirit that we begin to be this.
So to have friendship in a marriage, master your spouse's strength, master his weaknesses as well. Every human being, including all of us on this platform, are a combination of strength and weakness. If you don't deliberately put friendship in your marriage, it's going to tell when you become an empty nester. Mm. It's <laughs> going to tell. We would see it. We can, you see, when we are dutiful, everybody is running around. Babes, are you the one dropping the children? Babes, are you yeah. the one picking them up? Babes, like, are you taking us something back? There is activity. There is activity. So you will not know that there is a void. Oh. Building is when these children and grow up and leave that the emptiness begins to show that's when you begin to realize i do not know this person i've been cohabiting with i don't know your likes i don't know your dislikes our only conversations are children bills church government policies whatever in laws income those are the times that you are going to be like my god how did we get here then you realize that i honestly don't love this person anymore and this person certainly does not love me i don't love this person and uh or i may still proclaim that i love this person but i don't like this person and when you bring your union into that place where there is no likeness, I don't like you, you are in trouble. You have opened the door, you have opened the gate for the enemy to come, steal, kill, and destroy. It's a, it's a terrible place for any two believers to be in. So I want to move into the evening of our lives, which is the real thing that we are here for. The evening of your life, the evening of our marriage, the evening of our lives ought to be the sweetest. Now the children are no longer there. Now there we have we we have we are in a mold. We have already entered the mold. Do you understand? You are fixated. You are like a dried stick. I me mean too. I'm a dried stick. We have come to that evening. Let me tell you honestly: the evening of your life ought to be the sweetest of your life. If you feel that you have enjoyed an orchestra and everything was beautiful, just know it that they reserve the best for the end. If you can wait through an orchestra from the beginning to the end, you know that the end of an orchestra ought to be the sweetest. But I laid the foundation by saying you prepare. No orchestra is fantastic just because it's fantastic. No, there was serious rehearsal. Endless time of rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing make sure your children are not the only agenda in your marriage make sure your in-laws are not the only things and eh, daddy said this mommy said this they have hospital runs and eh, who is going to take them and eh, mommy is coming will you go to the airport if this is all you people do a time will come that this emptiness will show if you don't undo friendship very well in your marriage in the evening is hmm. wow jesus so much light here lord thank you jesus there is so much light here there's so much light here the lord is opening our eyes to truth 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 thank you holy spirit the Lord is opening our eyes to truth, Lord. The Lord is restoring our minds to how He intends it to be. The Lord is restoring our minds to how it should be. The Lord is restoring homes. The Lord is restoring our minds. You know how she made, she actually um, emphasized the scripture, which is actually the scripture that betters this particular platform. That's Colossians 1.13. Marosa Tayaba. Please resend, um, resend a request. You know how she emphasized that scripture that the Lord has has called us out of the kingdom. Can you still no we can't see you nor hear you, ma. Let me invite you again. 
kalusha taya babangi didi busu to ya brandi amasu tala praya baba baba e kalu prata e kara baba 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 shin kara baba baba e kiri didi didu shanta ya baba 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 mama shikara masu tunda ya baba you know she said that the lord has called us out of the kingdom of darkness you know out of the systems of this world that's the scripture and it's beautiful that she emphasized that you know the lord has called us out of the kingdom of darkness out of the exist what existed before the systems the ways they've operated in marriage the ways people have seen marriage the ideologies we've had about marriage or about life or about the kingdom and he has brought us into the kingdom of light for us to know how it should be done for us to know how to be light in our homes in our marriages caperia patunda labra Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Thank you. Malapri kete ne prunta ya prando sata ya baba. Ole prado sata nde de bo shanta ya prando saka ya ma. Me kora matande de bo shata la prako sata ya ba. Can you all join me in praying? In praying in the language of the Holy Ghost and just asking for the help of the Lord. I'm not sure why she's unable to join, but the Lord will set us free. We set our minds free. There is a mindset shift happening. There is a shift happening. Kapuranta ya prandusa. Oh Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for light that you've brought to us. Thank you for light that you're bringing to marriages, to homes. Kapali prantuta ya pra. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you. Male pratanti le prunta ya prandi shata. Ele pra kupa tande de boso tunda la prandi shata. Lord, we say thank you. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Mashila Panta Lipa Kufa Santayaba. Ekele Pranto Tun Taya Pato Taya Pandi de de Bosata. Marosa Tayaba will not be confined to the systems, to the systems, to what, you know, has been passed on to us. No, Lord Jesus. Makura Mama to the ideologies of the world. Masipa Tali Prakuta Ekrosa Tayaba Baba. We have eyes of understanding. Our eyes of understanding is being enlightened. We know, Lord Jesus. We know Makupa Lipa we know to understand our spouse's strengths and weaknesses and even if you're not married now is the time to glean on to this information God, thank you Holy Ghost. <laughs> i'm so sorry i don't know what happened do can you hear me yeah, we can hear you. Okay. hear you sorry about that i hope everybody is still here yes, yes. okay right. yeah okay so um where were we i was where were we we're talking about how um a few things you've spoken about mm. let me let me see. leaving was mastering our you uh -huh. already covered I remember now I was saying what you're going to throw your relationship into you know if what? yeah if you are not befriending one another now so I don't know where you would love for us to stay on do you want us to stay on building that friendship now how to build the friendship now now before we now move into it's so important can you hear me very well yes ma yes ma okay hear you. see eh? friendship is essential is one way to determine a healthy marriage if friendship is present in a marriage it's a strong pointer that your marriage is healthy the age of a marriage does not determine its healthiness you can be 20 years married and not be 20 years healthy that's the truth. You can be 20 years married and not be 20 years healthy. You may have the healthiness of a two-year-old. You can have a 10-year-old now who is not healthy. If, if a doctor has to determine that this person is, you are not teasing, for example, you are not walking, you are not, your hair is not growing properly, you are not responding to sound, you may be 20 or 10 years old, but you are not a healthy 10 years old. Something is not right. That's how many marriages are counting years, but they are not friends. How do we measure a healthy friendship? in a healthy marriage there is communication they can talk about everything they are not afraid to talk about anything let me crash the table in a healthy relationship there is quarrel there is misunderstanding there is there are times
times when we are not on the same page you don't like what i've done i don't like what you have done or what you are doing and i must be able to call you out if i feel that you're not pulling your potential if i feel that you're not taking care of the children or the children are not involved in you you're not involved in their lives like i think you should i must be able to talk about that in a healthy marriage there must be clear cut communication no holes bad no 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 middle line no such thing as you are you can't tell me that mm -mm. We are married, and don't in a healthy marriage you don't throw things like I'm not your mate. We have become mates, whether the wife is older or the husband is older. We have become mates. We can talk about anything. Only the caveat is that I must not communicate disrespectfully. I must not talk to you. I must recognize the king in you. It doesn't matter to me whether the wife is older. It doesn't matter to me whether the husband is older. In God's organogram for a Christian marriage the man is the head the same way david was not the oldest king in israel yet god made him the king and everybody even his father's mate had to bow to him so please don't let us stop using this uh, <clears throat> you are older you saw that you were older you chose to make him your husband you've got to honor the king that he is so you must speak with honor you must speak with decorum you must speak as one from with and with a noble birth. A queen does not talk, la sorry, I was going to speak one of our Nigerian lingos. You know, a queen does not talk unguarded. You speak as from a queen to a king. But what it is that's on my mind, I must be able to say to you. I must be able to talk to you. If we are, we, we are constantly sweeping matters under the carpet and we are not talking. We are not talking about our finances. We are not talking about our intimacy. We are not talking about the things that truly matter. We are pretending and we are acting drama. That is not a friendship and that is certainly not a marriage. What else makes a marriage strong? Acceptance. Oh my God, acceptance is so key. I'm telling you how to build a healthy friendship in your marriage. Acceptance. Sweetheart, stop trying to change your spouse. You cannot. One of the laws of life as learned from scripture. Did you notice that Isaac and Rebecca did not have courtship? This one that Harvard is telling us how to court and um, Cambridge is telling us how to court. It's like, it's even bringing more confusion. I bring my Christ-like nature into a marriage and I came to practice my belief, my Christianity is what I came to practice in my marriage. That whole show of loving my pastor or respecting my pastor's wife or respecting everybody is drama. True Christianity is at home. True Christianity is when you can offend me and I can and forgive you true christianity is me loving my neighbor more than myself true christianity is practicing the fruit of the spirit in my house my children ought to be the direct beneficiary of my fruitful christianity anything out of that i'm sorry is hypocrisy so in a healthy marriage there is acceptance can you please accept your spouse until you accept them you will not even know how to introduce your own self because we are different we are different do you understand when i accept my husband as he doesn't like pepe i need to stop trying to make him like pepe me i'm a yoruba person pepe is our life we were birth in pepe in pepe where we conceived <laughs> you understand but i need you to understand that look he is not a Yoruba man. He is not you. Another root shock I had to face with is that this my husband is not my father. You need to stop talking about your daddy here. Who told you that your father is even the standard? I have four brothers. I had to train myself. Stop talking about your brothers here. They and your husband is not any of your brothers. They will manifest all those great things that you claim your brothers are. He will not be one. You are going to learn your husband. Nobody becomes a lawyer accidentally. Nobody becomes a doctor accidentally. We submitted ourselves to a body of knowledge for a long time that qualified us to now be called a doctor. Have you, have you, have you submitted yourself to a body of knowledge that will make you learn your spouse? Many of us do not know our spouses. We are comparing. When I was dating Andrew, why did you leave Andrew? 
If the law was good enough, why didn't you stay with the law? Why did you want the grace of God? Amen. Why did you want grace? If you if you thought Andrew was good enough, you should have stayed with Andrew. But because Andrew was not good, and Andrew represents the law, you must abolish it so that you can enjoy grace. Oh, wow. I like understand. Yeah. So accept your spouse. If your spouse is still pretending around you, there is something wrong. If your friend, if your spouse is the kind of person that likes ladies, accept him like that it's not the, the fact that a man talks to ladies does not mean he's flirting with them we need to go and work on our security mm -hmm. and the fact that i am a lady and i'm not I, honestly i like guys more than i like ladies i think women are drama but guys are black gray navy blue so <laughs> what you see is what it is men are just i like guys I like them. And the fact that I like guys does not mean I'm flexing with them. And my husband has come to know that when he comes to any of he sees me, uncle this, uncle this, uncle that, uncle that, I jump on you literally, I can collect the jacket you are wearing and wear it immediately. That's me. My husband had to learn that I'm a people's person, extremely extrovert. My husband is learning to play. I taught him how to play. I taught my husband to come and play under the rain. He doesn't to kill people. He won't melt your anointing. I taught him. <laughs> Do you understand? I taught him by first accepting him for who he was. An introvert, a, pers a private person, my husband is a mushy, mushy, he's a typical mommy's boy. I had to learn so many things about him before I could introduce myself. If you are going to enjoy the evening of your life, inoculate your marriage with acceptance. Inoculate your marriage with communication. Another thing that you need to infuse into your marriage to build friendship is teamwork. Mm. Teamwork. Build teamwork into your marriage. There is too much competition in Christian marriage. Wow, Jesus. Teamwork. Learn your spouse. Wow. I think that's a take home. That's a take home kingdom call for us this week. <clears throat> we have to go learn our spouses. Wow, Mashata la Pradi Busata. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> I was just asking you now if you could hear me. You must build teamwork into your marriage. You must be deliberate about teamwork. And I was using the illustration of a football match. In a in a solid football team there is a midfielder there is a goalkeeper there is a striker a number 10 a this one and all they are all not playing the same role but they have one goal mm. once that goal is scored the entire team celebrates it mm. oneness is not sameness mm -hmm. one Yes, is not sameness. These are things I learned from my husband because human beings want to turn you into another person. No, oneness is not sameness. I should be at liberty to be me. I should be at liberty to express life, my God, my gift, the way it works for me, but for the good of all. When God blesses me, is blessing us. When God blesses my husband, is blessing us. When God blesses our children, is blessing us. We bring the blessing to the family for all our good. If this becomes your mantra, your husband will not feel insecure that you're trying to show off that you are the performer because he knows. Number one, she's doing it in my name. Nobody knows me as an Olag by nobody. In fact, if I mentioned that name, there was that. They know me as Timo Asegeme. Asegeme is my husband's name that I inherited in marriage. If you have this understanding, you have peace. You will be more intentional. You will go all out because you are doing it for the family, not for yourself. It will help you to solidify. It will help you to con consolidate that I am, see, I know that the Bible says that the man is the head of the marriage, but you know, the fact that he's the head does not make him the leader. 
If a man finds security and he knows that my wife is a diehard loyalist, but she is the one that has the leadership skill that this marriage needs, a secure man will let you lead. Knowing that we, you will not make a single decision without his blessing. You will not do a single thing with that. It's like having a normal team now. Do you understand? The coach in a football match is playing there, but he still calls the shot. He's the one that will wear that patch on his thing. We recognize you are the head. We recognize you are the head, but you don't have leadership skill. My wife has it. Look at Deborah. Deborah was the one that brought her husband into the Bible. We would never have known of Mr. Lapidoth if not for Deborah. They said the wife of Lapidoth. She recognized her husband. Yes, she was the judge. Yes, she was the poet. Yes, there was, she was the prophetess. Yes, she was the psalmist. In fact, she was skillful at war, but she was Mrs. Lapidoth. And her husband was secure enough to allow her be because he was a team spirit. Ooh. I'm telling the, the secret to having friendship in the evening of your life. I've talked about communication. I've talked about um, acceptance. And I've talked about teamwork. Maybe I should just talk about intimacy. You know, I don't know how much time we have. Yeah. Intimacy. You know, if you want friendship in your marriage, you must constantly, constantly Bring intimacy into your marriage. Don't let intimacy die. And when we say intimacy, people think we're only talking about sex. Sex is the climax of a good intimacy. Mm. To be, my husband taught me this, to be in heaven at 11, start at 7. To, to have a great sexual relationship in that marriage, ensure that there is continuous unbroken romance you you know dating constantly mm. talking and when we are going out my husband and i can just wear our slippers and just be walking around we can walk for 30 minutes just talking about ourselves talking about the talking about nature talking about our dreams have it if you don't build it into your marriage it won't jump on you in the evening of life intimacy Intimacy simply means into me, see. So you are the one that will reveal into me, see. Reveal your before no rainbow. Talk about your yesterday. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Talk about your yesterday. Talk about the things that got you. Talk about your fears. Look, intimacy is not possible in a marriage if I cannot be vulnerable with you. If I cannot sh share my fears, if I cannot share my worries, if I cannot tell you the things that I, I had experienced in life that has, you know, reduced me or just intimacy, just see me. Yeah, just see. Yeah, that's it. And intimacy is constant touching. Just constant touching. Intimacy is verbal. You know, intimacy is just that careless connection, spontaneous hugs, flirting, playing, stroking, I mean, um, what's that word now? To make fun of yourselves. Too you know many Christian marriages, they don't make fun of themselves. How will you even make fun of the person you call daddy? I know that there's nobody on this platform because your daddy is at home. You have to say there is a measure of respect, I agree, but don't forget to play. Mm. Don't forget to play. If you, I saw one scripture that still trips my husband and I. Genesis 26, verse 8, there about. Bible says, Isaac had lied that um, Rebekah was his wife because he didn't want the king, you know, to kill him. But the king was checking from his palace and he saw Isaac and Rebekah. I checked almost 10 versions. He said, one said spotting. Another one said um, flirting. Another one says making love. Another one, it was, it just described this boringness. 26, 8. I want to go read it too. Please read it. And if you can put it up, I'll be glad. So, you know. Can somebody help us put it up, please? Yes. This whole rigidity in our love life, it is not reflecting Christ. 
If you don't know how romantic your Jesus is, go and read the song of Solomon. Then you will know that your Jesus is a lover. Lover. A lot of wives on this platform cannot kiss for one minute unbroken. You will kiss as if you are stealing it. I don't understand. Why won't you be able to click? See, eh? I've come to know that kissing is actually that moment that nothing else is on your mind than that moment. Mm. So you should not hurry a kiss. You should not hurry kissing. Learn it now. Go and leave those children in their room. Play a video. Be with your spouse in the room and kiss. One minute on broken. Set a timer if you like. Say one pastor Tino said we should go and practice it. One minute on broken. You will see that it's not that easy. You will see that it's not something that we many of us don't know it. Go and let just stay with him, hold him and kiss him for one minute. What are, I, I've always considered, please, what are side chicks doing out there? We are the ones God gave this mandate to. When last do hold your spouse by the hand and walk him into the bath and bath together. Mm. This is... Thank you. Somebody has told us, caressing. As many... As many stand i mean as many um what's that word verses or or <laughs> inter what's it what translations sorry. thank you as many translations as you see now we've seen caressing oh this is a petrachal isaac the father of faith the ones that saw god face to face you, you have not even seen god and you are not letting us rest this is isaac he was caressing his wife rebecca guys look for other versions because i want to drive this intimacy <laughs> If you don't build intimacy into your marriage, when the children go, intimacy will not jump on your marriage. Hold your spouse by their hand. Walk him into the bathroom. Just <laughs> wash him like a little baby. Watch him. Lift up his hand and wash his armpit. Wash everywhere. Hey, you too, you know what can happen after a moment like this. Just let him bath you to bath him a quarrel cannot stay in a home that is like this tension stress cannot be in a home that is like this yeah. and if you practice makes perfect if you don't practice it it will not just jump in that time for your marriage um, corinthians 7 second corinthians 7 i think was the one that was saying that you don't have authority over your body and your spouse does not have authority over his own body he says you should give sex generously he says you should sit as a service unto the lord he says you offer generous benevolence and he was actually talking about sex be generously benevolent bring sex change your style this one that people have been facing the east every day as if you want to pray five times a day change that side of your bed change that bed change it change where that your bed is so you let it face another place that's your bed sheet change it take that duvet give the old woman another color make sex exciting in your marriage i'm telling you a marriage that has quality sex has quality friendship when i look at a couple i can immediately tell whether the sex in this marriage is solid or not honestly i can tell Hell, when there is solid sexual relationship in a healthy marriage, minimum of twice a week. I'm reducing it by the day because now I'm in Canada. Before in Nigeria, I would say three times a week. No matter what are you busy doing, what exactly are you busy doing? What, how long does a good sex relationship take? How long? So because I'm in Canada and I see everybody, around, okay, let's reduce it to two. But the people are not having sex weekly. It's a sign of sickness. Mm. don't let your spouse play into the hand of a philistine don't allow your wife you being a wife don't easily play into the hands of a philistine god put sexual urge there for us mm. and if your sexual life is not solid it takes me to the next thing that makes for a solid relationship faithfulness if you don't deliberately work romance mm. sex intimacy playing cajoling caressing fondling into your cup relationship and your marriage you are sending that marriage into unfaithfulness 
go and look at proverbs 5 6 7 8 there about you will see that there is a whorish woman standing at the corridor of our destinies ready to lure us women are being lured men are being lured there are no ugly girls again everybody has learned their art of makeup everyone is fine go and look at the typical 70 year old ladies and the 60 year old ladies nobody wants to age again everybody is beautiful as beautiful as you are there are people who want you if your cup of love your cup of romance your cup of intimacy is not full from home if it is empty somebody else will feel it and that your husband that you are abandoning I say it doesn't have six pack. That is one amusement park is amusing somebody out there. So, <laughs> so you better be deliberate to love that job and learn to rub that stomach. Let all of us make fun of that tummy and enjoy ourselves. Yeah. Faithfulness is a product of a cup that is filled from home with legitimate romance, legitimate love and affection. In a healthy marriage, there is responsibility. And I know that that's where many people miss it. Take responsibility to do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Don't be an irresponsible wife. Stop keeping your family indomie to eat all the time. Part of being responsible is to make sure that there is good food in the house, is to make sure that there is a clean environment anybody can be subjected to. Anybody can make this happen. The husband can. It depends on who is wired that way. But be responsible. Take care of your parents. Call your parents. It is part of being responsible. Take care of your husband's family. Take care of your wife's family make sure that you are, you are marking register. I always tell a lot of young wives, you don't, you don't have sense. You don't know what 2,000 Naira and Kara can do for you. Just go and look for all them aunties in the marriage, the real ones, the, the, the shakers and the movers. Settle all of them with laces and Ankara. Even when you are not there, they say, oh, no, eh, Biola, Biola. Biola is a correct girl. What did Biola do? Biola did not remove the head of their enemy. She simply gave them 2,000 Ankara and five, five yards of lace and she remembered to call them on their birthday. Nobody is that difficult. It's wisdom we don't have. Take responsibility. Do the right thing. Your, your spouse's sibling, have your favorite among them. The person that you are going to be so close to that will be giving you inside gist. And you do this. I don't know if I'm making sense. Take responsibility. And finally, what makes your marriage solid? Don't take one another for granted. You see, see finish enters as you grow older. Wow. Yeah. The kindness, is there a beg, is it not you? So that you would say, I will call you at four and then you don't call. Say, I hey, you understand. No, no, no. One of my slogans in life is teach the people treat the people at home like they were guests and treat the people outside as if they were the people from home i don't know if that makes sense so i treat my people at home my kids my husband i give them the guest treatment i treat them i serve them from the best dishes i serve them the best of everything and when you Biola visit my home i make you feel like you are part of the family i'm not going to treat you like a guest I'm going to go outside the room now. I can cook whatever you want now. That's my, those are the little things that I do to give myself a good life. Wow. Wow. So, how am I going to, let me just run quickly over this before we start asking a question. Okay. Um, we have questions. Huh? Yeah. For me, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> how am I going to deal long after the children leave home? Let me say this categorically. It is happy individuals that make a happy marriage. If you have chosen not to be happy because your children are not there anymore, you it's a choice that you have made. Happy marriages is founded on happy individuals. You must make up your mind to be a happy woman. Find your happiness. It is your commodity. Don't outsource it. Don't give it to anybody to do that for you. It is you. And your happiness is what you now bring into the marriage to spice up the union. Please find your happiness. When children leave, go and find your happiness. I don't even think it's right that your children were your source of happiness in the first place. God should be your source of joy and you should have found your own happiness. It can be gardening, it can be learning piano, it can be going body jumping, it can be time out with the ladies. Go and find your own happiness. 
that's one when your children are long, no longer at home another thing i need you to do is to have a bucket list a brand new experience come up with a bucket list you are no longer talking about school fees you're no longer talking about rent and all at this level we trust that the lord would have so, you know supplied all your needs come up with a bucket list travel the world with your spouse set new agendas places you have not been set new agenda go boat sailing do other things go on long drives together drive from one area or the, to another area it's yeah. a good thing just bring you know plan adventures plan trips long trips trips with friends just put that in with that you will not miss that children are no longer you know and um, there then another thing you can do to save that face of your life is to make new friends especially empty nesters like you find empty nesters go out on dates together share experiences sometimes just going to be the wives at other times just going to be the husbands at other times all of us let all of us just go out and share so how, is, how are you handling this phase how are you doing now there is no pta there is no visiting school there is no mommy i mean football mom and all of those things how are you coping you must build new friends go out over tea go out over coffee just have time with you know friends be deliberate take notes from them and learn from them and another thing that i think will make after empty nesting beautiful is constantly dating your spouse deliberately dating your spouse dress up dress up don't go to the restaurants that people have been going to people have been doing indian go and do thai taiwanese go and do chinese do something different try out a new restaurant and if you are not careful this phase of your life can give you an identity crisis you can start you can begin to feel because this is when you are not saying why won't those children call me back those children i've labored all my life for them you were doing your work that's what a mother does it is not a transaction you are not going to say by force you must give back to me they are trying to find their footing they are trying to understand their own spouses they're trying to understand their own children don't put a burden on them you don't create an identity crisis don't create an emotional challenge for yourself you wake up at night this child has not called me they should call but what if they don't call and you know what slogan i just learned every mother should have children outside have children other than your children have children other than your children who told you that it's only your birth children that will take care of you in the evening of your life as you go to church start gathering other children that you're pouring into this titles to lifestyle pour into other children gather singles into your living room other pancakes other puff puff other wings just say an evening with auntie tino come and ask me your questions let me share my experiences i failed in this i made a mistake in this i'm telling you the secrets to joy the secrets to life the secret to true happiness find other children parent other children there are some women who never birthed any children but solely children lay them to rest in the evening of their lives when their own children were in san diego and their other children were in san francisco they won't come home every single time you have a cough you must have a child nearby a child that you have loved in church it's child you have sat beside to show and to navigate life was that not the story of naomi and ruth our own children will not die but she Put into rules so much so that a non believer girl said, Eh, I can't do without mama. I'm following mama. Who can follow you? Who can say, I will not? Who can follow you? Who have you blessed and loved so much that is going to say, I'm following you, mama? Jesus said, Are you? You not going they said where shall we go with you jesus are the words of life we can't leave you you know so guard your heart against emotional crisis guard yourself against identity crisis and guard your home against marital dissatisfaction with these few words of mine <laughs> My goodness, like see the way you what you use in wrapping it up my goodness i'm blown away i don't know if other people thank you <laughs> Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. You all know with the Bible with Titus 2. There is a reason. There is a reason. <laughs> if there's a place in Jeremiah where it says that we should um, uh, not forget the ancient landmark. There six. Are six. Exactly. Wow. See this. 
According to us, you are praise God. Praise God. You are the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise. Thank you, Jesus. So we have a question mm -hmm. here. Um, it says, how best do you deal with conflicts in marriage or relationship heading to marriage? Conflicts, resolution, conflicts, conflicts. Um, listen to one another. Don't try to, don't, don't just try to win. Listen to what the other person is saying. What exactly is this person saying? Mm -hmm. That's one. Number two, you need to be reasonable. It's not about you. A healthy marriage is not made of one happy person. It's made of two happy persons. And both our interests must be considered all the time. All the time. So when there is a conflict, be reasonable. What is my spouse asking for? Is it for the good of both of us? Do you understand? Number three way, I think, is when we have hit a dead end, cry for help. Ask a spouse. I mean, ask for a, ask for counsel. Find out somebody that can counsel both of you are right. Somebody that is neutral. I beg you. Your mom is mom. It's not that person that you're talking about. Parents will take sides with their own. You need a neutral party who has no interest to gain, to listen, and to preside. And you have to get comfortable with not winning all the time. If, for example, you live in Canada and your spouse lives in Nigeria and your family wants you to have that wedding, for example, in Nigeria, um, your point may be, Canada is where I have my friends. Canada is where I have my pastor. Why would you say we should go to Nigeria? What is your spouse saying? He's saying we can't afford it. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I know it's going to be col colorful. I know it's going to be cheaper. But we, I mean, I know it's going to be colorful. I know it's going to be beautiful. But we can't afford it. And if you say, I have the money and I can afford it for both of us, that's taking the argument to the next level. Now, if he says, I know you have the money, but have we thought about where we would live? Have we thought about... See, it's a continuous conversation. It's a continuous negotiation conflict is a dead end where we, we insist on winning or insist on having our way please make sure that your your reason is not because that's what my father wants mm -hmm. that's not what my mother wants don't forget what we said about team spirit from this point you must learn to build a hub the us mm -hmm. you understand where we present ourselves to our families together and we tell our families this is what I want. This is what we want. And please support us. Stand with us. This I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, it is. Yes. That's, yes. that's how to deal with the conflict here. Yeah. yeah, if you're just and joining us. Pray and pray, 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 pray. Especially before marriage, because the enemy brings division. You see how they were making progress in the building of the um, Tower of Babel until their language was divided. Be careful that your language is not divided because that was where this, the building stopped. Mm -hmm. That was where the building stopped. Once their language was divided, nobody heard what the other had to say anymore and everybody just, they abandoned the project. You will not abandon yours because you will know how to get help and not to make it all about yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. She says thank yeah. you. That answer. Thank you. Um, Please joining us, please don't forget to share with your friends. Um, even when we are done, mm -hmm. I always not everybody may be called to be in front of the camera, but we are all called to be blessings. And how you can mm -hmm. sharing things like this as well. Mm -hmm. so, Aaron, um, you said something about counseling. Yeah. I wanted to ask if you offer like counseling service, you and Pastor, if you do counseling yeah. counseling. Yeah. Okay, so if oh, you, yeah. with you like how yeah. how do we reach out? Can I was just going to say that for a few people who may even have questions that are a bit uncomfortable to ask on this platform, you can follow me, Tino Asegeme, one word, on Instagram. I I would answer. And then on Facebook, is at Tinuke Asegeme, although I'm not even big on Facebook anymore. It's Instagram, I would rather. And I'll, we have counseling sessions, but they are paid up for because of, you know how it is in Canada. Yeah. But I mean, it's very, very okay. It's affordable. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we do premarital as well. We do premarital. If you want counseling for premarital, and all of that, we do that. 
and post marriage so you have just gotten married and the reality is dawning on you and you need to navigate we help we help with that phase of your life as well that's good um so i think this brings us to the end of this conversation this episode on cheating. if you want to be a blessing to her please you can reach out to me or reach out to her directly i would have actually posted this but please um she has come to water us let's water her back she Thank has you. is less or no reach Thank out you. um reference this this for me i would still have to come i, I couldn't take all my notes because i was listening <laughs> so mm. i would still have to come back to watch this if you need to go back to it if you need to share with your friends your sisters your brothers whoever share be a blessing be a be part of the success story of another home of another man Amen. and everyone will reward you it's your yeah. call Amen. if you need to share thank yeah. you so much pastor Tine. if you could just you're up. welcome are you going to pin me are you going to connect me with this content yes yes okay. i would if you can okay. just wrap wrap it off and uh pray us out father we love you and we are grateful for the privilege of sonship. Thank you. Thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. King of heaven, we declare that we will not lean on our understanding in the area of our marriage, in the areas of the seasons and the times of our marriage, but we will lean on you, our able and faithful Father, and you'll guide us into all truth in the name of Jesus. King of glory, any area where we have messed it up or missed it, we ask for pardon. We ask, O oh God of heaven, that you will forgive us. Now light has come. Help us to walk in the light in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for the healing balm over any healing or ill marriage. Uh, let your healing river flow, O oh God. You said your anointing and your rain will be on every one grass in the field. Let no single marriage escape that blessing, that rain, that soaking rain from heaven today and always. Thank you, glorious God, for Biola and for everyone else here today. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for teaching us constantly. We give you alone all the glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you for having me. God bless you all. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining this week's episode. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go back to this immediately. God bless you all. Again, like I said, please don't forget to share. And we hope to see you next week by God's grace. If you're not following us, please join the tribe. And you can also catch us on YouTube as well. God bless everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. If you're just joining, you can catch the replay on my page and pastor's page as well. Bye, everybody. Bye, yeah.